Hey there, welcome back. In the previous episode, we have set up a new client to use the authorization code flow. And the only thing that separates it from the OAuth version is the fact that we're putting the OpenID layer on top of it by requiring the OpenID scope. The primary goal of the previous video was to get our client to connect to our identity server and actually redirect to it. So now that we're redirecting to our identity server, we actually want to build up the identity part of it and authentication, etc. So let's go ahead and in the same way that we have set up in the basics for our identity example in the startup here, we can go ahead and grab these two config configurations. We could probably grab the DB context as well. Since I do want to use the in memory database, I don't want to set up. Uh, an actual SQL server and uh, stuff like that. We will do the seeding of uh, some users and I will show you as well how to do a registration screen. So let's just go ahead, copy all of this configuration into our identity server startup. It doesn't really matter where you put this stuff uh, above or below identity server. Uh, one thing is we will need the app DB context. So let's go ahead into actually, let's just copy this data folder and let's put it here. One thing we must not forget is to actually change the namespace. So let's say identity server dot data. Okay. And also we'll have to import these packages. So let's go ahead, double click on identity example and go into the CS project file. And I will just grab whole item group here. Go back into identity server. And it looks like I will have to remove the item group and just put the packages here. Uh, oh, formatting doesn't work here, so let's save that. I'll close it. And after the packages have downloaded, all the errors will go away. And that is pretty much what I was after. Uh, next is imp doing some imports. So let's import identity user. Let's import appdb context. Use in memory database. Import the namespace for that function. And let's rename this I to identity server cookie okay just so we can get a, a bit more visibility on this uh, i will rename this to auth login uh, just so we can be sure that we have re remapped from the default slash account slash uh, login path and we're kind of doing our own thing uh, next thing let's go ahead and add controllers slash uh, let's start with auth controller.cs and let's go ahead and add this controller, import this. And want to do a few things like public I action result login. And we'll return view here. And the next thing is public I action result login, where we will post something. So let's return view here for now. And what we want here is. Let's go ahead and actually create a login login view model. So I'm going to generate this type. It's going to put it somewhere there. Okay. I'll just say VM. Uh, in here, uh, the bare minimum that I will need is string username. I'm not going to add any validation, just so you're aware. And uh, password. Okay. So at the moment, all I'm looking for is to log in. Uh, I will seed the user in my program.cs. So every time I start up the program, it will seed the in-memory database. So let's go ahead and create the host builder. So once we built the host, we want to run it after here. And in between, uh, we want to first grab the scope. And then from that scope, we want to grab the services in order to create the user so let's go ahead grab using var scope equals host uh, services create uh, scope i think that was it yep using dependency injection and let's create this right so we want to dispose of the scope safely after we have created it now the primary thing that we want is to grab the user manager so user manager so scope 
service provider and get required service of type user manager okay and the user that we have registered is identity user okay and this is becoming quite large let me drop this down to a new line let's put a semicolon in the end and an R here okay so just quickly dropping back to the startup not this one let me close that so identity user is the C sharp static type for modeling our user. This is the default that the identity package provides if you're not aware. And uh, if you haven't watched the identity tutorials, essentially, after we build the host, essentially, user manager is just a service that is injected when we add identity into the dependency injection container. And basically, once we have uh, created our host, Right, so our startup is sort of packaged up and our dependency injection container is ready. We can go ahead and get this uh, service from the dependency injection container. And then once we have done our seeding, uh, we just go ahead and run our application. So what I want to do here is create a just, just a user. So we'll create a new identity user. And uh, let's go ahead and give him a name if I hover over. I can see that the parameter is username, so let's go ahead and just call him Bob. All right. Uh, next thing is I want to. So I have I at this point I just have an object. So let's go ahead and uh, use the user manager to create async, and uh, the parameters are if we go in are either just user or user and password. I want to I want to give the user a password. So let's go ahead and provide the user and the password is always password for development always password let's uh, get the awaiter and get result since uh, at this point the program is starting up it's okay to make blocking calls here all right so at this point the user will be created and i will be able to use this user to log in okay nice uh, in the future we might add like claims here and we will probably probably will because i want to show you how those claims get can be used in your MVC client and the JavaScript client, which we'll create later on in the tutorials. Okay, so seeding the user. Now I want to be able to log in with this user once I am on the identity server side. So what I will do in the auth controller, uh, I will return a page with the form where I will capture, capture the login. And over here, I will basically redirect back to whatever the redirect URL is. So let's go ahead and just create this page right now. So uh, views slash auth slash login dot CSHTML. And I will also control shift A and I will razor add the view imports fo uh, file. Uh, and I'll just use it for add tag helper. And I will grab all from Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC uh, tag helpers. Okay, I uh, had to remember that, but all good. Uh, so once I have that, what what this will allow me to do is essentially forge my forms a little bit easier and uh, just just the general model binding. So this is what it brings in these uh, tag helpers. So I want to go ahead point this to controller auth and uh, action login and the model for uh, this will be the login uh, view model right and uh, if you if you don't want to specify the whole namespace which i don't want to do i will just go ahead grab this namespace ideally you'd want this in uh, your own folder somewhere uh, but again i'll just go into view imports and at the beginning here i'll drop this down and i'll type in using and now I'm using this namespace across all my views. So if I go back to the login page, you can find this login view model. All right, so let's close that down. Let's close this login view model down. And let's go ahead and fill this out. So let's just quickly make like two divs, a uh, label, username, input type, uh, all of this doesn't matter. Whoa. Uh, let's say ASP for... A username, copy this whole thing, 
do the same but for password. Okay, and now we can go ahead and submit this information. So create a button, type is submit, I can say sign in. Uh, let's close down this error. At this point, we have a login screen. So uh, the, the next most rational thing to do is go ahead and try to log in. So let's see what's going on. And uh, there is one more thing we'll need to add to the login view model, but we'll get to that in a second. So here's the page. So if I go to home slash secret, I will be redirected back here. And at the moment, we're getting a error that we have reached multiple endpoints, and that is okay. Uh, the main thing that I want to bring uh, the attention to is the URL. And if you can't see it, if you, uh, it basi it's basically pointing to our login page about the fact that we haven't specified which one is get and which one is post. Uh, that's where it's getting confused. Uh, next thing is this parameter of return URL. All right, this is essentially, if we look at it closely, it is percentage two means slash so uh, percentage two f means slash connect uh, percentage two f again and authorize and uh, then it's callback client id client id mvc redirect uri where we are supposed to get redirected after that so essentially what is going to happen is after we have finished logging in we will redirect to the authorize endpoint so authorization endpoint and after that token will be dealt out, it will redirect back to the client, right? So in this return URL, there is essentially one more nested redirect URI in there as well. Okay, so what we want to do is also capture this return URL. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll need to add that to our view model as well. So let's cl uh, close that. Let's uh, first specify HTTP get and HTTP post. Uh, so we don't get that error anymore. Next thing, I want to grab the return URL. That was the parameter. And now for the login view model, what we want to do is grab the string and say return URL here. Close it. And uh, once we return the view here, we want to create a new uh, login view model where we set the return URL to be the return URL that we get from the query of the URL that gets us to this login page, right? So now that it's here in our form, we will have to save it somewhere. So you can uh, keep the URL as part of the form body, or you can add a query parameter. I like to just create a hidden input. So hidden, let's delete these parts and make ASP for uh, return URL and just like that. So now when we submit the form, the return URL is going to be part of the parameters. So let's go ahead, uh, put a breakpoint here. We, you can also break, we can also actually put a breakpoint here as well. So now let's go ahead and start this up. All right. So again, go to home secret. Uh, we reach this endpoint. So here we're just trying to display the page. Return URL is set to this variable, so we are indeed capturing the return URL that is passed here. So let's go ahead and display the login page. Now we're displaying the login page, and Bob password should work for the sign in. So let's sign in here, and then we will inspect the VM just to make sure that we're getting the variables. So once we know that we have the password, and the username coming through and the return URL, we can uh, essentially be sure that we're ready to build the next steps and that uh, uh, we don't have an error in capturing the information. So let's go ahead and close all that. And now we can focus on signing the user in. And for this, uh, we will need to bring in a, another object that the identity provides, and that will be the sign-in manager. So in this home controller here, essentially we want to do this the same thing. Let's just grab the sign in manager in the auth controller. I will go ahead, create a constructor, paste this here, uh, import Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity, 
and let's go ahead and create a global field. Okay, uh, make the read only. So what the sign in manager allows you to do is essentially edit the sign in session. Uh, so it will do stuff like uh, deal out the cookies, uh, attach claims to it, etc. So ideally, what you would want to do is check if the model is valid and if it is if it's not do other stuff but primarily what i want to do is focus on uh, the authorization authentication architecture part of this so we're not going to be looking into validation we will be looking into actually using the sign in manager to go ahead and use password sign in async for let's see what we have username password is persistent and lock out on failure so we can go ahead and pass vm username vm password and just say false false so if you're wondering what is persistent is is persistent is a persistent cookie which is essentially is going to persist in the browser so usually when you close the browser cookies get deleted a persistent cookie stays in the browser and survives the closure of the browser and so when you start the browser up again your Sign-in session still is still there. Lockout on failure. Uh, you configure the amount of attempts you get to log in. If you set this to true, essentially after like three attempts, you might get locked out. So at this point, we've signed in. Let's actually make this async to call it. Um, all right. Uh, import task. Cool. So now we want to wait for it. And usually, what you would do is you would grab the result and you would do something with the result, right? So you would check if it succeeded, if uh, you would then have a different if statement for if the result is locked out. So if you got locked out, you want to do something else, like send an email with a recovery. But for now, we just want to focus on this part here. And once we have signed in, at this point, essentially, the cookie is dealt out so what we want to do is just redirect back to the return url so we just want to return uh, redirect and we can grab the vm and grab the return url and we can put a breakpoint here just to inspect what this process might look like so let's go ahead and run this all right so let's go to home slash secret uh, we're here i'm gonna remove this breakpoint since i'm i know that that part is working let's say bob Password, sign in. Okay, so the error that we're getting is sub claim is missing. So sub is a well-known auth claim. And essentially what it's trying to tell us is that after logging in, it has failed to find the sub claim, right? And uh, essentially the place where it would find the sub claim is through the identity mechanism. So at the moment, the claims for the user would be on the user object. So when we create the user, the subclaim is the ID. So the ID is dealt out there. So to essentially know the ID of the user, you need to retrieve that user. And that's what we're essentially doing here. So, but what is actually the problem? The thing is, is that identity server needs a bit of a help with fusing with identity. So what we'll need to do is go ahead, right click, manage nuket packages and search for identity server and we want to find the identity server for dot asp.net identity package and this is what provides that additional integration with identity okay so once we have that let's go ahead and close this close this as well uh now at this point uh i can't remember if i said if a position here matters but just make sure that add identity is before add identity server and what we want to do is add ispnet identity to our identity server and register the identity user to be here okay so now what happens is identity server is aware of model for the user that you're using and how to query for this model and this essentially contains all the functionality and dependencies on ID the identity package. And it, it ha th th this part essentially has access to this part now. And the user manager and the sign-in manager that we 
So actively invoke, this basically gives identity server the same functionality. Okay, so let's save that. Let's go back to the auth controller and let's run this bad boy. All right, let's go to home slash secret. Uh, again, Bob, password. And at this point, we have successfully signed in. So result, success, uh, return URL is still there. So let's go ahead, proceed and see what happens. So at this point, it is trying to redirect us to the consent screen. The consent screen is essentially you as the user of this application. Once you have uh, been redirected to authenticate with an identity server, uh, it's going to ask for your consent to deal out this information that has been requested. So same as, for example, you have some kind of application on your mobile phone that has Facebook sign-in, and it will want to ask for such claims as your username, your email, and uh, your profile picture, and you might need to tick these off or like a list of friends. And again, you will need to tick it to basically allow it to select. Now to preserve the simplicity of this example, I am going to skip this consent screen, but just so you're aware the identity server does provide this and we will get back to this at a later point. Now the consent can be disabled at a client level, right? So we go into configuration, we go to the client and we type in consent and we select the require consent option and we say false, right? So we don't want to require consent for this client and neither for this client because really just a reminder, client credentials is a machine to machine communication. There is no user that's using this, so there doesn't have to be any consent. So let's go ahead and fire this up again. All right, home slash secret. And again, Bob, password, sign in, redirect, F5. Okay, and now we have successfully reached the secret page. Now, what I want to do is essentially, what if I, I want to register and redirect back to the secret page, right? So uh, there can be two possible flows. So let's go ahead and implement the registration screen as well. So let's go to auth controller. Uh, we're actually here. Uh, let's go ahead and close everything because at this point, this is where our primary focus should be. Uh, let's go ahead and copy these two things. And the first thing, uh, you want to keep the return URL. So what we want to do is say register here. We want to create a register view model. Let's go ahead and generate a class and a new file. Uh, and internal, we don't really want that. Let's just name it public. And let's go ahead and create something similar. So string, a username, uh, copy this to time, password, and confirm password. Okay, so this is the essential stuff for the registration screen. The return URL is just so we can get back. Okay, so there is our registration view model. Let's go ahead and close that. Now let's go ahead and rename this post method to register. Uh, let's click here for register view model and VM will do. Uh, one thing that we want to do, actually we want to do a couple things. First, we want to create a user. So we can pretty much copy this uh, functionality from our startup here. Oh, no, sorry, not startup, from program. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this way that we create the user. And instead of the sign in here, we want to grab this and delete this part. Uh, let's delete this get a waiter because this is now asynchronous. So we want to await on this and we actually need a user manager as well. So at the top here, let's go ahead and bring in a user manager of identity user type, call this user manager, make a global field, uh, just like that. Okay, we have our user manager. Uh, let's get the result. As before, we create the user. Now this option won't exist here because it's a user creating a result. Uh, what we want to do now is the user creation part doesn't actually sign in the user. So we want to sign in after we have created the user. So let's go ahead and actually pass our real parameters here. So username and 
Whoa, wrong button. Uh, VM dot password. And actually, let me go ahead and delete the confirm password because really, or let me actually. Let me actually show you how to make it so you check for consistency in passwords, right? So let's go ahead and put a bit of validation in here. So required, required, required. Uh, let's say data type is data type oh, type equals or yeah, it's an enum password. This is a password as well. And now in here we want to compare to the password property. Okay, so now the confirmed password is going to be compared to password. Uh, data type for both is password, and uh, we're going to put in some more validation in there as well. So generally, for stuff that you want to watch out for, is what I will try to show you here. So let's say if model state is valid. Or rather, not valid. This is what I want. Where I want to do this stuff. I want to return the view with the VM, and the errors will be attached automatically. And this is one benefit of having the return URL in your view model, is because if it would have been in the URL, you would have always had to sort of preserve it in the view bag or something like that. Okay, so. With the result, once we have created the user, let's go ahead and actually sign the user in. Uh, what we can do is grab the sign in result and uh, we will await on sign in manager. All operations are asynchronous, so that's how I know to write away. But let's go ahead and just grab sign in async. And what we can do is we can just pass the user here. And again, we get the two options of is persistent and uh, Authentication mode, let me go ahead, because uh, the user won't get locked out if we're just signing in without a password, right? And authentication method, I uh, can't actually remember what that was, but whatever. Let's say it is not going to be persistent. You know, assign void to an implicitly type. Okay, so there is going to be no result because we're expecting this to always succeed. Okay, and after we have signed in, uh, we want to redirect again. Uh, let's go ahead and copy the login page since it's going to be primarily the same. Um, but let's go ahead and make it register. Uh, here again, we want to rename this to register view model. And what I want to do is add a confirm password input. And what the way you display validation is you use ASP4 validation and username. And again, this is just going to automate the whole thing for you. So let's go ahead and not forget to put passwords here and confirm password here and point the form to the register endpoint. And we can, uh, don't know why I just retyped sign up, but um, change the button to sign up. Okay, and now we essentially want to navigate to this login, sorry, register form. The way to achieve this is you essentially want to put a link and again, you want an ASP controller off. Oh, uh, ASP action is register. And you don't want to forget to pass in your return URL. Otherwise, the registration form will essentially fail. So return URL. And you want to grab model dot return URL. And you want to pass it here. And the link will say register and uh, we don't actually need it as part of the form we can put a div here so it will be on the new line uh, and another thing that you want to keep in mind is you really don't want to use this return url once you're redirected to identity server so make sure that you think around how, how you, if you're going to design some sort of a navigation you want to be able to preserve this so again if we decide to uh, from the register screen, if we decide to go back to login, right, again, we want to pass this return URL back to the login page as well, right? So if we bounce between these off pages, we don't want to use the uh, return URL. So let's go ahead and put a few breakpoints here. Let's just see what happens. Okay, home secret. Now, if we navigate to the register page, 
we still have the same return URL. Let's go ahead and just sign up with an empty form. Uh, model state is not going to be valid and this will just return the VM. Okay, so th these are the spans that are with the basically with the errors, right? So another thing to double check is this input hidden input that the return URL is still there persisted through invalid validation. So just make sure that you're checking these things when you're making them, otherwise stuff will break, right? So let's go ahead and register as test password and let's make this something different is valid false proceed and the confirm password and password do not match right so uh, we have uh, essentially achieved uh, registration validation and uh, I will sign up actually before I sign up let's go back to login and you can see the return URL is back there so if we log in here everything will be fine and dandy but let's go ahead and register so now test password password Let's sign up. Is it valid? It's true. Uh, we create the user. We create the result. It's succeeded. Uh, we sign in. Okay, that's fine. And return URL is there. So let's go ahead and return here. And we are now at the secret page. Okay, so this is essentially it for setting up identity with Identity Server. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this uh, episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. If you would like to see any other particular functionality of identity with Identity Server, like uh, password recovery or email confirmation, leave a comment. If you have any other questions, also leave a comment. And as always, see you on my other episodes.